Good morning everyone. Now we are going to start our physics class. In today's session, we just uh, discuss first of all what uh, we have uh, uh, left over in the last class. Now in the last class we just started with the cubic crystal system. So the cubic crystal system is consisting of simple cubic uh, radius lattice. This is called simple cubic radius lattice. You see, simple cubic has one lattice point, so it's a, it is also known as primitive cell. So in the unit cell, see, this is the unit cell, right? So this is called a simple cubic. You can just see my arrow mark. Right, it's exactly this particular shape is nothing but this shape is known as unit cell. And you'll find that the, at the ends of the corners of the unit cell, you'll find one one lattice point. And that lattice point is not entire complete lattice point, but one by eight part of the lattice point. Since we are discussing about the three dimensional figure, so that is the reason that we just take this as one by eight part of the lattice or the atom. For that instead, we are just uh, you can just see this. This is one by eight part we have taken here. One by eight, one by eight, and one by eight. So this is actually when you see three dimensionally, you will uh, exactly uh, you will understand. So what uh, we are trying to tell here. So since we we are very much concerned with only two dimensional figures, right? So on egg die you can see only two dimensional figures. So you just uh, now you have to see that whatever the part is which has been shown two dimensionally, that is one by eight part of the atom or the lattice point. So in the unit cell on the left, the atoms at the corners are cut. You can see the atoms are cut in some pieces. The only portion, that portion is done with nothing but we call such portion as 1 by 8 part of the atom belongs to that particular cell. And the rest atom belongs to the neighboring unit cell. So here, we just uh, in previous section sessions, we discussed that we will find this uh, numerous number of uh, unit cells. So these number of unit cells uh, will be there in three-dimensional uh, cubic crystal system. And here, so this particular simple structure will be known as a uh, simple cubic radius lattice. Now here, now you can just see this. This is the part which uh, you can just see how this three-dimensional figure looks like. See how unit cells have been classified into various uh, three-dimensional. Again, if you want this, I will again show this particular slide. See, this is one, second one. See, like this, the atoms will be there. So, you can just see that uh, simple cubic uh, unit cell, how the simple cubic unit cell has been, uh, uh, what you can say, uh, is there uh, three dimensionally, how this particular figure will be three dimensionally look like. So, we can, so this is the, the schematic uh, understanding, a schematic figure for understanding a small uh, part of the, uh, you, know, you can say, the atom. So in the atom, you will find that there is a numerous uh, a number of these uh, things appearing. So now this particular structure will uh, continue. So we will go to the next one. So what is actually the body center cubic, the various lattice? So here, you will find that in cubic, simply cubic uh, unit cell, uh, that is called one of the previous lattice of cubic crystal system. And here, the next important part that we are going to learn here, body centered cubic, that is BCC. So, body centered cubic radius lattices, which is found in the crystal system, that is cubic crystal system. So, body centered cubic. So, body centered cubic has two lattice points. So, what is the, what is the meaning of uh, here two lattice points? Here you will find that one complete uh, atom or the lattice point, it will be exactly residing at the center. So see here, this again uh, 1 by 8 part of the atom or the lattice point is shared by the corner uh, of each unit cell. You will have a numerous number of unit cells when you consider three dimensionally. This is only the one phase that we are going, we are seeing here. Now this is, uh, in order to explain it more clearly, so you can just see the second figure also. Here, at the corner it has, in the case of simple cubic, you will find that at the corners also, one one lattice points are existing. And here also see, at the corners here are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. And one more lattice point exactly at the center. So we just, just A, B, C are nothing but these are dimensions with respect to the uh, reference point. This is the reference point we have taken. And you can take any reference point. So we, for uh, our understanding purpose, we just uh, have taken this particular reference point here. So A, the x-axis, B on the y-axis and C on the z-axis. So VCC has eight nearest neighbor. Each. What is the meaning of nearest neighbor? So see, uh, if you consider
is this particular atom at the center of the unit, uh, which is residing at the center of the unit cell. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. See so again I am repeating. The, uh, this particular thing is a unit cell. Uh, this is a unit cell. The entire thing is a unit cell. Which unit cell are talking about? Body, center, cubic. Right? This is the structure, whatever you are observing, or you are seeing, that is body, center, cubic. And exactly at the center you will find one atom or the lattice point. So the, the these lattice points is having some neighbor. What are that neighbor? And the nearest neighbor means there will, there will be, see this particular uh, atom is exactly the center to all the lattice points. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. So BCC has BCC body centered cubic has eight nearest neighbors and each atom is in contact with its neighbors only along the body diagonally. So these particular atom is having in contact with each other with respect to this body diagonally and we have shown that the it has been shown that this is these dotted uh, lines, right? You can see these dotted lines. So this is uh, what uh, this particular aspect is saying that BCC has eight nearest neighbors, each atom is in contact with the neighbor along the body diagonal direction. So, this type of why we are studying about this body centered or a uh, uh, simple cubic, this particular structure will be the example of simple cubic is polonium. The uh, element which is uh, exhibiting this type of simple cubic structure is nothing but polonium. That is one uh, example of the, this particular uh, arrangement of the lattice points or the atoms all these molecules or the ions we are trying to uh, understand that particular atom or molecule or the ion will be exhibited by the uh, element that is called polonium. Now here again uh, the same part uh, what we discussed. So again see let us just imagine so what, what is happening, how the unit cells have been distributed. Again and, uh, so we can just uh, see so this type of uh, symmetry, uh, symmetry will be there. Uh, when you consider the simple cubic, right? Just uh, the previous matter. Now here, BCC has a uh, body centered cubic, has eight nearest neighbors. So each atom is in contact with neighbors only around the body diagonal direction. And this particular uh, particular unit cell will be uh, find in the elements that is iron, lithium, sodium, etc., including the alkalis and several transition elements, which will be particularly the CG structure that is body centered cubic structure. So many of the elements of what you have already studied in the periodic classification of materials. So that periodic classification of materials you will find alkalis, transition elements, alkali earth metals and alkalic normal. So that particular uh, metals uh, the element sorry, the element that will come under the category of alkalis and the transition elements. So that particular thing will be mm, will Take the structure of uh, body centered cubic. So you can just see, see here. So this particular thing we can just uh, uh, draw it on the board also, but if it is uh, our kind of presentation, you can be it will be easy for you to understand. And see here today. So whatever the um, problem or the doubts uh, you are having, definitely we will have a doubt session and we'll, uh, definitely the one class will be there completely next week, uh, probably after 16th. I am going to start the doubt classification session. So only some few introductory classes have been completed. And definitely whatever the doubts you are having, uh, uh, definitely I will uh, clarify that, uh, try to clarify as early as possible. But for now, uh, in sense what we have to do here is that uh, after some uh, two to three again classes, uh, uh, definitely I will try to clarify from the starting the class what uh, whatever the topic you are having. So we just go topic wise and then uh, definitely you will not have any uh, problem with the topics which has been discussed. And regarding the syllabus and all, I think that it has been already been shared so in the group. If you have any problem with the syllabus and all, you can just ask the uh, head of the department uh, right, for this particular instant time and after some uh, three, after 16 definitely I will try to clarify your all doubts, right? So regarding from starting from the first topic, fine. So you need not to worry regarding any uh, issues with the, uh, this particular topic which has been uh, already shown to you in the classes. So definitely I will try to sort it out 
as early as possible. So now this is about our body center human. Why we are, you can just see, uh, think that why actually we are trying to learn about this DCC. So body centered cubic, why and we are going for simple cubic. So these elements are of uh, primary importance for the engineering purpose and also for the uh, R&D department. So that is the reason that we need to understand how, how the atoms, how the uh, molecules or the ions are distributed inside this particular solids or the metals or the uh, elements. That is the reason that we are going to, uh, we are going here with these particular types of lattices. So now this is the example of uh, body centered cubic. As we move on to this face centered cubic, so here when I say face center, here again, you can just see this unit cell. An individual uh, wave you will find, see, first we just have a glance uh, of uh, this particular figure. You can just see this first figure. So again, you see how many uh, lattice points uh, a unit cell is having. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. See how many lattice points? 8 lattice points. Now you can just see that these particular, how many phases this uh, cubic cell is having? How many units? You can just imagine the dice. When I say cubic unit cell, so you can just have an imagination of die. So in the die is having how many phases? Like a die, it is a die, right? So the first one, this is second, right? This is third one, and this is fourth one, and upper part, right? And the bottom part. So how many? Six. So you can just see that each phase, at the center of each phase, you will find one more lattice point. Here also. One, two, three, four, and here it is five. So how many? One, two, three, four, five, and also. And also it is six. So the how many six phases are? Six phases are sharing each lattice point. So you, you just, uh, you can imagine, uh, I'm talking about the coin. So coin is having uh, how many phases? Two phases. If there is an atom here, one phase of the atom will be shared by this particular phase. And the other phase will be shared by this particular part. So how many atoms, extra atoms, other than the lattice point at the corner? One, this is one. So this is shared by this phase and this phase. This is two, this is shared by this phase and this phase and the upper one which is shared by the upper part and the bottom part. So how many? Three extra atoms which are residing in the uh, face centered cubic. So here how many atoms are there? Face centered cubic is having four. Already you know that for simple cubic you will have one complete atom. So why are we writing one complete atom? One by eight of the corner. So how many corners are there? One by eight into eight plus how many uh, atoms more? Three atoms. So one plus three. So face center cubic has four atoms, so it is non-primitive, which we come under the category of non-primitive cell. So many of these common metals, copper, nickel, right, and so on, etc., crystallizes in the FCC structure, that is face centered structure. So now this is uh, what we are, so you can just see copper is of our primary importance. Wherever you find that we are, uh, uh, what we can say, copper and nickel, so they are very much uh, is very much important uh, for our uh, practical applications, right? So here, we are just taking these two examples only, you and you, we are having numerous examples, right? You can just have numerous examples for your understanding purpose, I am just taking this copper and nickel here. So now, see, in order to understand it more clearly, here we, you can just see this diagram. So here, one phase, this particular uh, atom will be shared, the one phase of this atom is shared by this particular bottom one. So one, two, and this is what? 3. So 3, already one atom is there. For any uh, cubic uh, lattices, you will have uh, one atom at the corner, 1 by 8 into 8. That is 1 by 8 into 8. So that comes to be 1. 1 plus 1, 2, 3, and 4. So face and the cubic has 4 atoms. So it is non primitive set. So many of the common metals which come under the category of the face and the cubic. We will just uh, confine here ourselves to copper and nickel. We are having numerous numbers. For further understanding purpose, for now, in, for this particular instance, we are just concentrating on one or two examples. Now we can just see this. We just started with the cubic crystal system. So we started with the cubic crystal system and the simple cubic, then simple cubic, how this uh, simple cubic look like, and then what is body centered cubic, it's schematically looking like, and then we started with face centered cubic. Now, you can just see that 
Uh, previously, uh, we have uh, gone for the different uh, aspects. So what we are doing here is that we just uh, have a, a writing session here so that you can be easily understand. Uh, first of all, we just go for this uh, separation. You will get it just a minute. So we will uh, right. so we'll, uh, go for the separation of uh, planes, right? Separation, separation between, going off, separation between planes. Now this is what separation between planes. You please write it down if it is possible for you. So here the next topic that we are going to learn here, the separation between the planes. Uh, now, uh, see here, separation between planes, so what is the meaning of separation between the planes here? So here, you will find that uh, there will be, uh, just, uh, just a minute, we will draw this figure, this is what a cubic, I am just taking one cubic uh, lattice uh, cell, here. Now this is the cubic unit cell, so you will find uh, this is a semantic diagram, right? So what I am doing here is I am just drawing a semantic diagram, so more precisely what uh, I am doing here is that Now, so separation between the plane that we are going to discuss uh, in this today's uh, session. So before starting to this uh, we will uh, just have a glance what we have studied in the previous classes. Uh, so starting uh, from the starting end. Why? Because again uh, you should not have any problem uh, with this uh, uh, topic which has been already discussed. So later in the later section, in the latest class we will start with the, some problems and so on. So we started with the crystallography. So why we need to understand about the crystallography? So you already known to that, that aspect very well. So again I am just repeating that. Uh, particular thing here. So here we know that the solid materials are classified in crystalline, polycrystalline and the amorphous. Right? So crystalline solids are we just say that are single crystal and you have a polycrystal and a non-crystalline solid. So different types of solids that we are uh, class solids have been classified into these three categories and each type is characterized by the particular order, a particular region within the material. Right? So now this crystalline solid is nothing but it is a form of substance in which the constituent particles, when I say constituent particles that is atoms, molecules or ions are arranged in a definite uh, repeating pattern in three dimensions. So we see whatever we are trying to do that is actually uh, we are studying about three dimensions but since that three dimension uh, we cannot see it from our neck eye, so that is the reason that we just uh, uh, going for this two dimensional figure then uh, to understand it uh, three dimensionally. So the single we just started with the crystalline solid, crystalline solid is solid form of substance, substance with which the atoms or the molecules or the ions are arranged in a definite repeating pattern in three dimension. So single crystals uh, will definitely will have a very high degree of order. When I say high degree of order, so the regular geometrical arrangement. You can just see regular geometrical arrangement. Or you can say periodic periodic arrangement of the constituent particles. So now here, just we have taken one example for that single crystal. So you just uh, take this example of uh, what you can say, uh, pi, see, pirate uh, crystal. And this pirate crystal is available with some impurity amorphous, that is amorphous solid. So like this, you have different examples for the single crystal. Then we just started with the polycrystalline solid. So polycrystalline solid is nothing but you can just see that. So you see how this uh, boundaries, uh, this is what these are, the, you can just see these dark lines are nothing but these dark lines are the boundaries uh, which are there inside the crystal. So now what is actually the meaning of uh, polycrystal? It is actually the polycrystal is uh, an aggregate of small single crystals. So see you can just see uh, this is one type of uh, a single crystal, another type of single crystal and this is another type of single crystal. They are combined with each other and when I see, when we see with the microscope, 
So this is the this particular uh, structure that you the semantic diagram you will observe. And we call this as that are this these are nothing but grains. And each grain is having a boundary. It means that there is there is a separation in between these two. Uh, what you can say surface of the separation of these surfaces are nothing but we call that as grain. We can just see a B and C. Again, you have you should not have any confusion regarding this. You can know this uh, well, uh, to the dimension we are talking about. Which dimension I am talking about? The grains inside these uh, particular crystals are having dimensions of 100 nanometer to 100 microns in diameter. So very high di uh, definition uh, microscope is used to understand this particular. Uh, uh, to have uh, at least a schematic diagram, we can just see that 100 nanometer to the uh, 100 microns in diameter. So now we can have a, uh, and this is uh, again uh, the polycrystal grains can be having the, some called polycrystal uh, crystal grains are having the dimensions which are very much less than 10 nanometer in diameter, and definitely that particular due to that dimension, they are also known as nano crystalline solid. So now we just uh, uh, so the polycrystal we just uh, gone for polycrystalline started with this crystalline solid. So what is actually crystalline solid is about and how the atoms uh, are arranged inside inside the crystalline solid you, you should have an information. See when I say solid, solid has been classified into crystalline solid, polycrystalline and the amorphous. So what is actually the meaning of crystalline solid? We just had the definition of this solid and again how the schematically arrangement of these atoms are look like. So these are the diagram, these three di diagrams indicate how the atoms are arranged inside the crystalline solid. Understood everybody. Now we just go for the crystalline solid. So we have taken an example for it, right? We have, have taken the example of a pyrite crystal. See here, you can just see single pyrite crystal. So now it has the atomic structure that depends periodically away across its whole volume, even at infinite infinite length. Infinite length. So we can just imagine we talk, we are talking in terms of 100 nanometer diameter at uh, 200 microns and even we will find this uh, particular crystals right For this is about the polycrystal right and the crystalline solid also you will have very uh, less diameter so we, we are not going in that uh, exact uh, dimension of that why because whatever the why we are not going uh, we are not uh, talking in terms of dimensions here whatever the thing you are getting uh, that particular uh, whatever the dimension it may be that dimension is particularly the whole component of the element that is called crystalline solid. Here you will find some uh, differences. So that is the reason that we are just uh, going for this 100 nanometer, 100 uh, microns in diameter dimensions. When you talk about polycrystalline, definitely we need to understand the uh, dimensions or the lengths of the given crystal. So this is called polycrystalline solid. And then the third important aspect that we are going to learn here is that amorphous solid. So you already know that when I say amorphous, so amorphous is nothing but it is a non-crystalline solid which is composed of a randomly oriented constituent particles and they defi definitely they don't have a particular pattern, definite pattern or definite structure. So, so the, the order, the so again you need to understand the dimension here. So why because amorphous have on very few atomic or molecular dimension. When I say sir, well, why it does not specifically mention that it's a few atomic or molecular, why it does mention uh, only few atomic or molecular dimension. So you should have an uh, understanding that when we talk about atomic scale, so that atomic scale is nothing but it is uh, uh, come under the 10 power of minus 10, right? In the category of 10 power of minus 10. So that is the reason just uh, what we are doing here is that we just uh, confining ourselves to the atomic or molecular dimension. So amorphous materials uh, particularly don't uh, have a very long range order. But examples of these amorphous, you already know when I say amorphous, that I will be plastics and glasses. And again, the polycrystals, metals, for, for polycrystals, you have different metals, which are of uh, very much uh, important for the you know, core engineering level and for the uh, different uh, aspects in our daily life. Now, the, when we go for the perfect crystal, why we say that this is a departure from perfect crystal? See, the, whatever we are talking that is in ideal fashion. So, practically, the arrangement, is there, there is a possibility of arranging the periodic uh, property of the atom or periodic property of the crystal. There is a very less probability of uh, finding the atoms uh, 
in a periodic nature. Definitely, you will not find uh, the periodic nature, but uh, you will find that there will be some difference practically. So, strictly speaking, one cannot prepare a perfect crystal. Definitely, we cannot prepare a perfect crystal. And again, you will have a, again, you should have a question in your mind. Definitely, the question arises that the crystals can be made in laboratory. Naturally, the crystals are available already. Naturally, the crystals are available. But we can prepare the we can definitely we can prepare the crystal in the lab also. So now this is uh, one of the uh, important uh, what, what a student should understand here is that the, the, there will be no perfect crystal. Practically, it is not possible to have a perfect crystal. So what is the word, what is the definition or definition of the perfect crystal? So when I say a perfect crystal, so then the atoms are arranged uh, not exactly arranged in a uh, particular. Of, uh, regular fashion, but it will be in a un, uh, what you can say, you know, the random arrangement of the atoms uh, or the molecules or the ions will be seen in the crystal ray. Right? Practically, whatever the things which will be available uh, uh, to, our, to, uh, uh, to us, so that will be coming is uh, that is not exactly the perfect crystal we are talking about. We just uh, practically it is not possible to have a periodic arrangement of atoms. So now. And so there will definitely you will have see whatever the name from the nature you will get that not not be exactly pure. You will find some impurities. You have to remove that impurities, and definitely that due to that impurities you will not uh, have the periodic nature of the uh, what you can say uh, the arrangement of the atoms. So the reason that that particular thing uh, we are talking about not exactly the periodic nature. So now, what is actually the crystallography? See, we just uh, started with the uh, different uh, solids, uh, solid materials, and these the solid materials uh, one should have a very clear idea. So, what is solid material is all about. Now, here in this particular section, what we are trying to understand what is actually the meaning of crystallography. Now, in this particular class, uh, we are just learning about the uh, crystallography. So, it's nothing but it is a see. When I say crystallography. So when I say when we when I talk about crystal, so definitely I'm talking in terms of three dimensions. But it is uh, our for our neck eye, it is possible. It is not possible. So our neck eye can only see two dimension. That is the reason that we need some see. I, I, I cannot uh, directly if I'm telling it cannot I cannot see means you have a separate glasses for it in order to see that three dimension. Right. So that is the reason that uh, uh, for our understanding purpose. We need to understand about the crystal. When you know, need to understand about the crystal, first of all, the first primary important aspect comes into our mind is that whatever we are seeing, that uh, that is uh, through two dimension. So that two dimension aspect, uh, we can have a very clear idea when you uh, just uh, think it in a two dimension. So, so the case, what is actually the meaning of crystallography? You had uh, already an idea. So it is a branch of science that deals with the geometrical description of the crystal. And their internal arrangement. So it is a branch of science. Again, it is a part of science, right? So it deals with the geometrical uh, description of the crystals and their how the how the arrangement are there inside the crystal. That is called crystallography. Now, crystallography is a uh, have is a very much important for solid state physics due to these three important aspects. So first of all, we need to understand what is the symmetry of the crystal, then crystal structure. And then this structure has been classified according to the symmetries which are available in different types of crystals. So here, so now why are we are going for all these things is that again starting from the starting such that you should not have a brief idea what we have learned in the previous classes. So again, the base what is the, if I get okay? Now I know that is what is crystallography. So this crystallography. Uh, why we should understand this crystallography? So you know, already know that you know, to know this particular crystal structure and the symmetries of this crystal. When I say symmetry, symmetry does it? Is the atoms are arranged in a particular order? Is the atoms are arranged in a particular order, in a periodic order, right? With the finite distances, right? And equal distances. I say that that is in symmetry. And if it is not, if the case is not uh, a symmetrical case, uh, then I say that the symmetry is very. So that that is called that is the reason that we need to understand. So if you understand this crystal, if you study this crystal agarati, then you will understand the crystal structure and also the symmetry which is possessed by this crystal structure. Understand everybody.
Now, we, what is actually, see, again, uh, now this is a crystallography. We started with the crystallography in the last uh, previous classes, and now we are going for the crystal matrix. What is the need of uh, studying from now? See, from now onward, we are just uh, understanding the three dimensional uh, nature, right? Uh, by assuming it in two dimensions. So, how the how you will assume that? So, that is the reason that we need to understand some important uh, parameters for that. So, what are that parameters? First, we start with a crystal lattice. So, when we start with the crystal lattice, what is the meaning of crystal lattice? The geometrical properties of the crystal are very, very important. So, what is crystal lattice? When you uh, when we have a particular point here, remember what I am doing, and if I am taking a plain paper, and in that plain paper, and just uh, uh, marking some points here, and that mark the points which have been marked, that uh, points are equal distance with respect to one. Uh, I'm just you can take any reference point, starting point. You just take one point, draw one point, and that point is a reference point. And to that point, from equal distance, let us consider one unit. After one unit, you have again, you will have again, uh, you have a point. So again, for one unit, you have again a point. So that is called. Uh, what you can say that an imaginary points have been drawn at equidistances and that imaginary points are nothing but we call about crystal. So why we are confining ourselves uh, to crystal only? Why? Because whatever the imaginary points you are seeing, that imaginary points are nothing but you have to assume that how the, uh, this is the arrangement, this may be the arrangement of the atoms inside the crystal. So now th that is the reason that we see here. For, for your understanding purpose, we have taken the platinum uh, uh, crystal and for that platinum crystal, we are, by using the scanning tunneling, tunneling microscope, we find that how this, but you can just see this, this, this is the, uh, what you can say, structure of the platinum and how this particular uh, structure look like. You can just see the periodic nature of the atoms or molecules or the ion, the constant particles which have been shown in periodic manner. So here also see, you can see the schematic diagram, how the unit cell will be formed. This is an imagination which have been done. And but this particular figure is very much uh, what you can say that is taken from scanning the living microscope to understand what is actually the meaning of crystal lattice. So once uh, we started with the crystallography, we need to understand what is actually the meaning of crystal lattice. Understand everybody. Now this aspect, so see that you see again. So when I say crystal lattice, Again, you whatever the thing uh, what we have taken an imagination that should be proved mathematically. So that is the reason that we just we have taken some tears. You can just see these dots. These are imagination. This is imagination what we have done here. So we have just taken some important dots and we have just colored with it. Some some, some points are colored. You can just see this, these points are colored. And we have taken some reference point and that reference point is origin. And to the reference point, what is the nearest neighbor you will find here horizontally? This is from this is the reference point and this is the nearest neighbor. So OA is what we are just saying small a, OB small b, and OC, you can see BC or you can just say this particular distance. See, we, we first of all we go for two dimensions. The here is the reason that we are x axis we have taken y axis. OA is small a, the distance between O to A we have just taken it as small a. O to B distance is small b. So that is this length of probably the distance or the length from O to A and O to B. Right? So each point is having and definitely when I say crystal lattice, so each point is having an identical surroundings with respect to the other atom. If I take this as an origin or reference point, definitely this point will have same uh, uh, environment with respect to the origin. And again, this particular point will have same environment with respect to this reference point. So you can take you you can take any point. Every each and every point will have identical environment and identical property. So that is the reason that we are very much uh, concerned with the um, identical uh, nature of the points. So first of all, imagining the points, then we started with the each point is having identical nature. And such points are nothing but because such points are crystal lattice. Now, how the crystal structure will be formed two dimensionally? Be? So, let's see again some imaginary points where with equidistance each, you can just see, imagine each point is equidistant. And if I associate this particular imaginary point with the constituent particles that are atoms, molecules, or the ions, whatever the pattern here I am getting 
that pattern I will call such thing as the self structure. Now, I will think that you had some idea for what is actually the meaning of crystal structure. So, how the two dimensional, see, uh, till now we just uh, gone for two dimensions. So, for two dimension radius lattices, lattice, see, lat crystal lattice are crystal lattice particular parameters given by the scientists called radius. Therefore, instead of getting crystal lattice, now we just go for a two dimensional radius lattice with different choices for the basis. You will have, you will do, you definitely will have, you can have the own choices. Okay, see, own choices is radius choice. So, radius has given these lattice choices and he says that the, each point should have same environment with respect to the another point. So each point should have same environment with respect to the another point. That is the what you can say. Uh, whatever the structure you will observe, that structure is nothing but you will call such thing as the crystal lattice, the crystal structure. So lattice, radius lattice, or crystal lattice. I think everybody is clear with this particular aspect. Radius lattice, crystal lattice, plus basis will give you a crystal structure. Now, now we just uh, go from the basis. So again, see, basis, you understood what is actually the meaning of crystal structure. So basis, nothing but the, just now, a group of atoms which describe a particular crystal structure. Now, uh, see, again, we, for clarity, uh, uh, point what we have done, we have shown with uh, some two different points here, and you can find that these two colored, in one is lattice point, another is the atoms or molecules or the ion. So here, uh, crystal structure is nothing but crystal lattice plus basis. So how many crystal lattices or radius lattices you will find? The crystal lattices have been classified into radius lattice and non radius lattice. When I say radius lattice, the radius lattice, see, you can just see, this is called radius lattice. And if you find one more, uh, numerous, uh, uh, here numerous number of uh, different lattice points, which are not exactly periodic in nature, but also you will find that if you consider this reference point, one more lattice point will be existing here. So if this is the case, now you call such a lattice as non radius lattice. Atoms can be different kinds, some lattice points are not equal. Here you find the sphere, very much symmetry, symmetrical points and they are equidistant to one another. And here you don't, you don't find the, see this particular aspect is equidistant, but you find that apart from this lattice point, one more lattice point is existing for each case. So definitely that will come under non radius lattices. So types of radius lattices, in order to understand this non radius lattices, we have taken the, we have already taken the shape of honeycomb and uh, our two dimensional lattice vector, see, whatever the, what, what we have discussed in the previous classes, whatever the assumptions, see, uh, we are talking about imagination. So that imagination should be, right, correlated with the uh, mathematical aspect. So that is the reason that uh, we, we have taken, see, you can just see this particular figure we have, have shown in the last uh, slide. So again, if you just mark it with the references point, so what do you be? Rn is equal to n1 a bar plus n2, b bar where n1 and n2 are nothing but they are the integers and a and b, what is the a and b here? Uh, the dimensions with respect to the reference from the reference point to the nearest point. So the Rn is equal to n, n1 a plus n2 b or n1 a bar plus n2 b bar. So a space that is a set of points such a translation from any point in the lattice by a vector. So this is the resultant uh, vector Rn is equal to n1a bar plus n2b bar or n1a plus n2b. So when a translation repeating the same function infinite number of times. What is translation? Translation is nothing but repeating the same thing infinite number of times. So we call such a, uh, what you can say, repetition as we translation repetition. <coughs> so now, this is the case for uh, translation, two dimension, three, and so these are the various lattices, one, two, three, four, and four, five, and so on. So this is the case of uh, what actually is happening to the uh, different uh, uh, units. And then when we I go on for the different units, and see here, this particular figure is very important. See, what is a unit cell when I say uh, unit cell? So unit cell is not uh, nothing but uh, what you can say the simplest geometrical smallest uh, simplest or smallest geometrical figure uh, which can be formed right uh, so what is the smallest geometrical figure which is formed three dimensionally it is a cubic in nature you can just see you can see easy this is a unit cell and you find numerous number of unit cells here 
3 m. I'm talking about 3 m. Yes, this is one way, uh, one one form of the uh, three-dimensional cell. This is another form, and this is another, and this is another. So you can just see if we, uh, we have taken only one part of it, you can just see it. Ah, uh, we have discussed only this particular part. You can find it. How many number of unit cells which are there, right? In a given uh, three-dimensional. So that is the reason that that is called one by eight part. Why we are why I call uh, why in the previous section we just discussed about one by eight. So one by eight, you can just imagine that how many units are you are observing three-dimensional. The three-dimensional view of the, the schematic view. You right? see again, I am telling you there is a schematic view uh, of three dimensions. So this is three-dimensional uh, units that you see uh, for uh, the last classes also. We had discussion about atoms, molecules, and units that. And these units are uh, forming this type of uh, block, and then these blocks are nothing but combined to form a particular crystal. So this particular figure what we have uh, discussed in the last previous classes. So like like this way you are having three common units. Now I think that you have very clear idea. We are talking about uh, cubic crystal in the first part. I started with the cubic, simple cubic, body centered cubic, and the face centered cubic. This is schematically this has been shown with some uh, spherical balls here. So this is a simple cubic lattice, body centered cubic radius lattice, face centered cubic radius lattice, or simply you can say lattice. So now we again see unit primitive units that have been classified in primitive. When I say simple cubic, you, you can add the corner, you'll have units, uh, points or lattice points. So we just call that as a primitive. Apart from the corners, if you have more than one lattice point apart from the corner, then I say that is called non-primitive unit. So again, unit cell have been classified into primitive and non-primitive. So non-primitive, primitive. Understood? Face centered, body centered, come under which non-primitive section. And simple cubic will come under the uh, primitive section. Understood, everybody? Primitive unit cell is simple cubic radius lattice. Non-primitive unit cell is body centered and face centered. So this is the this is, when I say uh, unit cell. Is it now we start with three dimensions. Understood, everybody? We start with three dimensions. This is the origin, and this is x-axis, y-axis, and z z-axis. Definitely, you at some point, as a, 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 this particular dimension is a, this dimension is b, and this dimension is c. So I am definitely this is subtending some angle. So here I talk about x-axis. So definitely you have this particular angle is alpha, beta, and gamma. Where a, b, c, and alpha, beta, gamma, we call some lattice comes. Lattice points. These lattice points. Are having some constants, so therefore it is called lattice constants. Understood, everybody? And one by eight of each lattice point. I just now I have shown you the figure also of the unit cell. So that is each unit cell. You can just see it. Each unit cell in the figure. You can just see one by eight into one by eight. That is one. So like this, a primitive unit cell. That is normal simple cubic unit cell. So this is. You already know the volume of the cubic. Uh, uh, what do you say? The cubic cell is not made of cube. So therefore. Uh, you find that in the on the other class, seven crystal system and A, B, C and alpha beta, if this condition is satisfying, I will call such particular thing as the uh, crystal system as cubic, hexagonal, orthorhombic, hexagonal, monotic. If see, uh, if I take some lattice constant mm -hmm. and these lattice constant are exhibiting this particular condition, see, on the other class, we, 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 we are having seven different uh, crystal systems, uh, we can say, so, uh, Solid materials. Again, see, I'm, I'm talking about solid materials. So when I talk about solid materials, crystalline solids. So that crystalline solids are, are non-crystalline solids, or uh, whatever it may be. That particular thing has been classified into. Uh, I'm talking about crystal systems, right? So crystal system is coming under the solid. So cubic, tetragonal crystal system, orthorhombic, hexagonal, monoclinic, triangular. These are the seven crystal systems which have been available on the earth. So now that is the reason that uh, if this condition is satisfying, then only I call this uh, particular crystal as cubic. If this condition is satisfying, I will call that particular thing as tetragon, and so on. So we just taken the examples and negative directions. So when uh, talk, we have talked about some different crystal plane, so plane is nothing but uh, you can just see. And so I talk about a uh, simple, I will just, I will just take one unit cell. See, this, see when, when I say unit cell, it is a cubic. So that this particular shape is nothing but this shape is what this shape is this face. Now this I'm talking about this shape of face. So this is one plane. I'm talking about one plane. This is one plane. You can just see one point, two point, three point, four point. 
combined to form a particular plane. So I can talk about planes now. So here, the planes, crystal directions, right? What is crystal direction? See, how, what is actually direction mean? So each lattice point, the, from the lattice point, choose the origin completely constant. In every lattice point is identical. You already know that every point is identical in nature. All the eight, when I talk about simple cubic or primitive units, each and every point is identical to each other. So here, the origin, this particular thing, if you talk about this particular one, you see, nearest neighbor, I'm just talking about this. You can go for this, you can go for this, you can go for this, and so on. We have just started with this, so this can be uh, mathematically uh, written as r is equal to n1 a bar plus n2 b bar and this. And this indicates the direction of the crystal, this is called crystal direction, so with respect to the reference point. So now this is about crystal directions. And we have just taken the examples of crystal direction. And that direction may be positive, may be negative. Therefore, we have to take some integers. So that is the reason that we have mathematically taken as integers. So for understanding it, answer. So therefore, uh, we started with the Miller indices. So when I say Miller indices, so uh, why we are studying about Miller indices? Miller is the name of the scientist you already know. So Miller indices, uh, why we are talking about Miller indices uh, is that you, when you see a unit cell, there are numerous number of units which are present in the uh, crystal uh, systems. So in the crystals, so where actually the more atoms you will find, more concentration of atoms will be found, uh, will be available inside the crystal. So that particular indication is nothing but that will give us the information regarding the con more concentration of the atoms. So these particular Miller indices will give us the mm, what you can say pictorial uh, representation uh, mathematically uh, how this particular uh, uh, crystals directions are there and um, where you find more number of atoms. So that is mathematically, uh, we have already defined it. Uh, mathematically, I will show you how Miller indices can be uh, found. So Miller indices are nothing but simplest, uh, three simplest possible integers. See, 3 by 3 we just uh, head scale. We, we are talking about three dimensions. We talk about three dimensions. Therefore, Miller indices, whatever you are finding out, so in terms of what is in the head scale plane. So there are three smallest possible integers which have the same reciprocals of their intercept of the uh, concerned plane uh, along the crystallographic axis. So we call such a, a particular aspect as Miller indices. How to take the Miller indices, how to determine the Miller indices if you have only plane. If I have a, if I'm having a diagram, now how we are going to uh, determine the Miller indices. So these uh, determining Miller indices are very simple. So first of all, we have to take the intercept of a given plane and take the reciprocal and then you just simplify that particular aspect very clearly. Uh, simplify means I uh, will show you. So simplify one by one uh, so like this. Uh, you can just simplify it. if you get an uh, what you can say, say for example you got now one by two one and infinity. So one by two one by uh, one infinity. So we will have two here. Two one. So two one take LCM of it. Whatever the number you are getting, two definitely two. Multiply it. Whatever you get that particular smallest ratio that ratio is nothing but 2, 1, 0 and wherever you find infinity why we are finding infinity see if I talk about uh, one plane so that plane if the other plane is, uh, is parallel to the uh, the second one so we just take it as uh, infinity that intercept will be taken as infinity so that is the reason that we are just uh, go, going for the infinity you can just see, pause me and see the different uh, slides what, you have, what I have shown in the previous classes uh, the reason that I am having uh, started to be fresh with the actual syllabus, you know, what, how you can find out the uh, Miller indices, right? So like this, you have numerous examples of Miller indices, and how many crystal system? Cubic, hexagonal, triclinic, monoclinic, orthorhombic, tetragonal, triclinic. Uh, so each crystal system here, cubic crystal system is having radius radius, means what is when I say radius radius? Such that environment over each point is identical. So how many three different ways I can arrange the points here in cubic crystal system. The real reason that we are writing single cubic, body center and face I think everybody got a, a clear idea of what we have studied in the uh, today's class. In three dimension, how many radius lattices are there? Four. So how sir? We can see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Right? Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13 and 14. What is the written? 14 radius lattice. Single cubic radius lattice, body centered cubic radius lattice, face centered. So in the hexagonal you will find only single cubic. So you can arrange the points in only one order. 
very simple cubic uh, radius. For monobaric, you can arrange either base centered cubic radius lattice or simple cubic. Like this, you have in 14 radius lattice, it's three dimensional. So I think you have very clear idea regarding the starting. We have started with our uh, main syllabus and uh, discuss you today's class uh, uh, completely started with the uh, starting one and we just uh, ended with the crystal uh, systems, right? So now you can see this uh, crystal system and again see definitely see whatever the queries you are having that queries will be rectified and definitely uh, you will be clarified more uh, clearly right after the 16th December, right? So thank you everyone, uh, thank you for today's class, uh, thank you for your patience. See, whatever the uh, queries we are having, definitely can put uh, in the group. But this is a star, this particular aspect for this uh, physics class, or physics uh, subject related, 16th uh, December, after 16th December, you can uh, just uh, clarify the, uh, your queries, right? So thank you everyone, thank you uh, everybody for your patience.